Lesson 12 The Biblical Worldview Sabbath Afternoon December 10 If we are fighting in the strength of the Mighty One, we are on the side that will win at last. In the end, we shall conquer. The greatest work, the most perilous scenes are before us. The deadly conflict we must meet, are we prepared for it? God is still speaking to the children of men. He is speaking in many different ways. Will they hear His voice? Will we place our hands confidingly in His and say, Lead me, guide me? There is cheap religion in abundance, but there is no such thing as cheap Christianity. Self may figure largely in a false religion, but it cannot appear in Christian experience. You are workers together with God. Without me, said Christ, ye can do nothing. We cannot be shepherds of the flock unless we are divested of our own peculiar habits, manners, and customs and come into Christ's likeness. Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 339. It is positively necessary for those who believe the truth to be making continual advancement, growing up into the full stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. There is no time for backsliding and indifference. Each one must have a living experience in the things of God. Have root in yourselves. Become grounded in the faith so that having done all you may stand with unwavering confidence in God through the time that will try every man's work and character. Exercise your powers in spiritual things till you can appreciate the deep things of God's word and go on from strength to strength. There are thousands who claim to have the light of truth who take no steps in advance. They have no living experience, notwithstanding they have had every advantage. The Word of God offers spiritual liberty and enlightenment to those who seek for it earnestly. Those who accept the promises of God and act on them with living faith will have the light of heaven in their lives. They will drink of the fountain of life and lead others to the waters that have refreshed their own souls. Sons and Daughters of God, page 332. The time will come, Paul wrote to Timothy, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3-5 to Sound doctrine is Bible truth, truth that will promote piety and devotion, confirming God's people in the faith. Sound doctrine means much to the receiver, and it means much too to the teacher, the minister of righteousness. For wherever the gospel is preached, every laborer, whatever his line of service, is either true or untrue to his responsibility as the Lord's messenger. Gospel Workers, page 311. Sunday, December 11. The Model of Jesus. The wonderful example of the life of Christ, the matchless tenderness with which he entered into the feelings of the oppressed soul, weeping with those that wept, rejoicing with all that rejoiced in his love, must have a deep influence upon the character of all who love God and keep his commandments. They will give sympathy, not grudgingly, but liberally. By kindly words and acts, they will try to make the path just as easy for weary feet as they desire the path to be made for their feet. As we receive daily and hourly the blessing of God, we can do no less to show our gratitude than to have a kindly, unselfish interest in those for whom Christ has died. Our High Calling, page 183. If we have become the disciples of Christ, we shall be learning of Him, every day learning how to overcome some unlovely trait of character, every day copying His example and coming a little nearer the pattern. 
If we are ever to inherit those mansions that he has gone to prepare for us, we must here be forming such characters as the dwellers there are to possess. The requirements of God are made in wisdom and goodness. In obeying them, the mind enlarges, the character improves, and the soul finds a peace and rest that the world can neither give nor take away. That I May Know Him, page 121. Christ gave his disciples their commission. He made full provision for the prosecution of the work and took upon himself the responsibility for its success. So long as they obeyed his word and worked in connection with him, they could not fail. Go to all nations, he bade them. Go to the farthest part of the habitable globe, but know that my presence will be there. Labor in faith and confidence, for the time will never come when I will forsake you. The Savior's commission to the disciples included all the believers. It includes all believers in Christ to the end of time. It is a fatal mistake to suppose that the work of saving souls depends alone on the ordained minister. All to whom the heavenly inspiration has come are put in trust with the gospel. All who receive the life of Christ are ordained to work for the salvation of their fellow men. Whatever one's calling in life, his first interest should be to win souls for Christ. He may not be able to speak to congregations, but he can work for individuals. To them he can communicate the instruction received from his Lord. Ministry does not consist alone in preaching. Those minister who relieve the sick and suffering, helping the needy, speaking words of comfort to the desponding, and those of little faith. Christ would have his servants minister to sin-sick souls. The Desire of Ages, page 822. Monday, December 12. The Body as a Temple. The greatest praise that men can bring to God is to become consecrated channels through whom He can work. Time is rapidly passing into eternity. Let us not keep back from God that which is His own. Let us not refuse Him that which, though it cannot be given with merit, cannot be denied without ruin. He asks for a whole heart. Give it to Him. It is His, both by creation and by redemption. He asks for your intellect. Give it to Him. It is His. He asks for your money. Give it to Him. It is His. Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. God requires the homage of a sanctified soul, which has prepared itself by the exercise of the faith that works by love to serve Him. He holds up before us the highest ideal, even perfection. He asks us to be absolutely and completely for Him in this world as He is for us in the presence of God. The Acts of the Apostles, page 566. Men will never be truly temperate until the grace of Christ is an abiding principle in the heart. Circumstances cannot work reforms. Christianity proposes a reformation in the heart. What Christ works within will be worked out under the dictation of a converted intellect. The plan of beginning outside and trying to work inward has always failed and always will fail. God's plan is to begin at the very seat of all difficulties, the heart, and then from out of the heart will issue the principles of righteousness. The Reformation will be outward as well as inward. Councils on Diet and Foods, page 35. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 The right use of one's self is the most valuable lesson that can be learned. We are not to do brain work and stop there, or make physical exertion and stop there. We are to make the best use of the various parts that compose the human machinery. Brain, bone, 
muscle, head, and heart. The right use of oneself includes the whole circle of obligations to oneself, to the world, and to God. Then use the physical powers proportionately with the mental powers. You are the Lord's, for He created you. You are His by redemption, for He gave His life for you. Preserve every portion of the living machinery that you may use it for God. Preserve it for Him. Your health depends upon the right use of your physical organism. Do not misuse any portion of your God-given powers, physical, mental, or moral. All your habits are to be brought under the control of a mind that is itself under the control of God. Sons and Daughters of God, page 171. Tuesday, December 13. The Mind of Christ. Many are sensible of their great deficiency, and they read and pray and resolve and yet make no progress. They seem to be powerless to resist temptation. The reason is they do not go deep enough. They do not seek for a thorough conversion of the soul that the streams which issue from it may be pure and the deportment may testify that Christ reigns within. All defects of character originate in the heart. Pride, vanity, evil temper, and covetousness proceed from the carnal heart, unrenewed by the grace of Christ. If the heart is refined, softened, and ennobled, the words and actions will testify to the fact. When the soul has been entirely surrendered to God, there will be a firm reliance upon His promises and earnest prayer and determined effort to control the words and actions. Our High Calling, page 336 We have a work to do to resist temptation. Those who would not fall a prey to Satan's devices must guard well the avenues of the soul. They must avoid reading, seeing, or or hearing that which will suggest impure thoughts. The mind should not be left to wander at random upon every subject that the adversary of souls may suggest. Says Paul, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This will require earnest prayer and unceasing watchfulness. We must be aided by the abiding influence of the Holy Spirit, which will attract the mind upward and habituate it to dwell on pure and holy things. And we must give diligent study to the Word of God. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word, says the psalmist, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, verses 9 and 11. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 460. Let your soul be absorbed in meditating upon the glorious truths contained in the Word of God, and you will have no constant craving for something which you have not. You will despise cheap, vain thoughts. You will be ever trying to meet the elevated standard of virtue and holiness which is kept before you in the gospel. You will seek for higher attainments in the divine life. Converse with God through the medium of His Word. By contemplating the lofty ideal He has placed before you, you will be uplifted into a pure and holy atmosphere, even the presence of God. When you abide here, there goes forth from you a light which irradiates all who are connected with you. In Heavenly Places, page 161. Wednesday December 14. The Guidance of the Spirit When He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, said Jesus, He will guide you into all truth. The Comforter is called the Spirit of Truth. 
His work is to define and maintain the truth. He first dwells in the heart as the spirit of truth, and thus he becomes the comforter. There is comfort and peace in the truth, but no real peace or comfort can be found in falsehood. Through the scriptures, the Holy Spirit speaks to the mind and impresses truth upon the heart. Thus he exposes error and expels it from the soul. It is by the Spirit of Truth, working through the Word of God, that Christ subdues His chosen people to Himself. The Holy Spirit was the highest of all gifts that He could solicit from His Father for the exaltation of His people. The Spirit was to be given as a regenerating agent, and without this, the sacrifice of Christ would have been of no avail. The power of evil had been strengthening for centuries, and the submission of men to this satanic captivity was amazing. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead, who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of divine power. It is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer. It is by the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. The Desire of Ages, pages 670 and 671. We must individually seek God. This is a personal work. Let us draw near to God, allowing nothing to come into our efforts that would misrepresent the truth for this time. Let everyone confess not his brother's sin, but his own sin. Let him humble his heart before God and become so filled with the Holy Spirit that his life will show that he has been born again. We read, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1, verse 12. The gospel of Christ is to be lived, practiced in the daily life. The servants of God are to be cleansed from all coldness, all selfishness. Simplicity, meekness, lowliness are of great value in the work of God. Try to unite the workers in confidence and love. If you cannot do this, be right yourselves and leave the rest with God. Labor in faith and prayer. Select Christian youth and train them to be not workers with hearts like iron, but workers who are willing to harmonize. I pray that the Lord will change the hearts of those who, unless they receive more grace, will enter into temptation. I pray that He will soften and subdue every heart. We need to live in close fellowship with God, that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. It is by this that the world is to know that we are His disciples. Let there be no self-exaltation. If the workers will humble their hearts before God, the blessing will come. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, pages 218 and 219. Thursday, December 15. Ready for His Appearing. Everything in the world is in agitation. The signs of the times are ominous. Coming events cast their shadows before. The Spirit of God is withdrawing from the earth, and calamity follows calamity by sea and by land. There are tempests, earthquakes, fires, floods, murders of every grade. Who can read the future? Where is security? There is assurance in nothing that is human or earthly. Rapidly are men ranging themselves under the banner they have chosen. Restlessly are they waiting and watching the movements of their leaders. There are those who are waiting and watching and working for our Lord's appearing. Another class are falling into line under the generalship of the first great apostate. Few believe with heart and soul that we have a hell to shun and a heaven to win. The crisis is stealing gradually upon us. The sun shines in the heavens, passing over its usual round, and the heavens still declare the glory of God. Men are still eating and drinking, planting and building, marrying and giving in marriage. Satan sees that his time is short. He has set all his agencies at work that men may be deceived, deluded, 
occupied and entranced until the day of probation shall be ended and the door of mercy be forever shut. The Desire of Ages, page 636. The fact that a man is not a hypocrite does not make him any the less really a sinner. When the appeals of the Holy Spirit come to the heart, our only safety lies in responding to them without delay. When the call comes, go work today in my vineyard. Do not refuse the invitation. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7. It is unsafe to delay obedience. You may never hear the invitation again. If you cultivate faithfully the vineyard of your soul, God is making you a laborer together with himself, and you will have a work to do not only for yourself, but for others. In representing the church as the vineyard, Christ does not teach that we are to restrict our sympathies and labors to our own numbers. The Lord's vineyard is to be enlarged. In all parts of the earth, he desires it to be extended. As we receive the instruction and grace of God, we should impart to others a knowledge of how to care for the precious plants. Thus we may extend the vineyard of the Lord. God is watching for evidence of our faith, love, and patience. He looks to see if we are using every spiritual advantage to become skillful workers in His vineyard on earth, that we may enter the paradise of God, that Eden home from which Adam and Eve were excluded by transgression. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 280 and 282. For further reading, The Upward Look, As a Thief in the Night, page 365, and The Sanctified Life, True and False Theories Contrasted, pages 7 to 16.